we talked about, paying tithes. And really, I left the thing about tithes open because really a lot of, a lot could be said about it. Um, but it's one of those things that you have to be convinced in your heart. You know what I mean? It's something that you have to, Micah. Shh, 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 shh. It's one of those things that you have to. Um, as you grow in the Lord, you just kind of have to have to come to something that that your conscience, you know, tells you. You know what I mean? Where 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 you're not doing it because someone tells you to do it, or you're doing it because your conscience testifies this is the right thing to do. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. And obviously, so anytime that you talk about tithes, it's not going to be an easy topic. And um, we also talked about um, taxes and rebellion. Um, I really liked that when we got off into that discussion about rebellion. I really liked that a lot. Um, but just a few more things I wanted to say about tithes. God does bless people who seek after him and honor him. He does. Um, and so oftentimes when we pay tithes, God will bless us um, because we're, we're, we're honoring him and we're, 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 we're seeking after him. We're doing something that, that, that causes his servants to be provided for. And, uh, you know, when we do it out of that fear of the Lord, it, it, God does bless us through that oftentimes. Um, but once again, I do see a lot of people who try to make up for their, for their sinful living by, oh, I pay tithes. Well, we looked at that in Amos. That's... God won't hold you sinless just because you pay tithes. Um, and in uh, 1 Corinthians, a uh, pastor brought this up, I believe it was last Sunday night. No, Chuck was preaching last Sunday night. Um, it must have been last Sunday morning, I guess. Uh, but in 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul is, is writing, and he, and he basically says, you know, I'm, I'm worthy of the wages to be paid, but I haven't taken them just to be a good example for you. Um, and that would class fall under the under the category of tithes. Um, and if you guys remember last Sunday morning, if you were there, pastor was talking about being led by the Holy Spirit with your financial giving. I thought that was worth bringing up. Um, and we're going to talk about this next month with um, the law. You know why why was the law given and whatnot, and and, and and so if we if we're free from it, why why do we still have to do things like that? We'll talk about that next month. Um, but uh, just because we're free from the law doesn't mean that we shouldn't do something that's right. And we'll talk about this more next month, so just stay tuned. But um, ask yourself this question. Is it moral to not pay tithes when you reap the benefits? Is it moral to not pay tithes when you're reaping the benefits of the church? See what I mean? That's what, one of the things that comes down to it. Can you say that it is a good thing to not pay tithes when you share the benefits of the church? You know, you, 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 have, you meet in a building. See what I mean? We, we all get to enjoy that. So can we honestly say that – you know, I'm, t I'm talking about me too. Can I justify not paying tithes when I reap the benefits of uh, pastor's guidance, of me being having having a building to meet in, having air conditioned when we're in that meeting so we don't have to sit there like it's Africa? <laughs> I mean, not, no offense to Africa, but I really don't like really, really hot weather. <laughs> I really don't like that. Um, so anyways, just something to think about. Um, so we asked this question last week. Do things have meaning or are they given meaning? What do you guys think? I think originally they're given meaning, but once they're given meaning, they have meaning. That so what's to, say, what's to say that you can't do it because you don't hold to that meaning? Well. Just because you see it, that doesn't mean I have to. You know what I mean? If, well, if you're a Christian, then you need to go back to the verse where it says to – like what we were talking about with the sacrifices, just because you don't see it wrong doesn't mean that other people see it wrong. And if it causes someone else to stumble, then don't do it. Mm. Okay. Does so anybody else have something to say about this? I mean, what do you guys think? I'm going to give a few examples, and I want you guys to keep thinking about this. Does something have a meaning, or is it just something that somebody randomly throws at it? 
So let's look at a few things. The first is an upside down cross. Now, if you're familiar with the cult, you know that uh, different things like Satanism do work, use an upside down cross. But if you're familiar with Catholicism, you know that they also use an upside down cross. Where did this come from? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, Peter, when he was being when he was being being killed uh, under under Emperor Nero um, in Rome, um, it is said. Church tradition says that he didn't want to be hung in the same or uh, crucified in the same manner that Jesus was, so he asked him to hang him upside down because he wasn't worthy to share in that same thing. Um, and so ever since, the upside down cross has been as associated with uh, the apostolic authority, which is a foundation of Catholicism. That you know the the popes have have that passed down from Peter. Um, <coughs> so that's why it's used in that. However, once again, throughout the ages, it's been used in other things like Satanism and that. So, see what I mean? The, the same thing nowadays is used in both good things and bad things. See what I mean? Just something to think about. So, does it have meaning or is it given meaning? <coughs> think about this. Um, the second is tattoos. Now, for the longest time I've told you about how they didn't have tattoos in the same way that we think of um, today. However, there has been a new archaeological discovery, which I'm just tickled pink about. They have found on an Egyptian woman the first tattoos. This dates to about the same time that Moses was in Egypt. Yeah, I'm really excited. I, this opens up so many different doors. Is the um, body was preserved so well, or what? Yes, it was uh, through through um, you know the yeah yeah mummification, um, and they analyze the tattoos and it, it's 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 um the the tattoos are symbolic of the. Uh, of the Egyptian religion, you know, with the different things with the gods. Um, so that brings up the question: When um, Moses r wrote in the in the law, not to get tattoos, was he talking about what I originally said? Told you guys that he was talking about with the, um, um, excuse me, with the markings on yourself for the pagan worship, or was he talking about tattoos? Tattoos, like we think of tattoos, since they just came from Egypt, where the woman was from. See what I mean? Was it a common enough thing? So then that brings up the question of are tattoos inherently evil? Or were they made evil by the Egyptian practices of, of their idol worship? Think about this, okay? Now let's 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 go a little bit deeper into this. The peace sign. If you're familiar with with, with um This was a triumph. Make sure it's not important. Okay. Turn off the ringer this time. Uh, if you're familiar with, um, you know, the World War II time with with nuclear war and all that stuff, um, there was different things. Um, there were different things where people were talking about <coughs> the ethics of nuclear uh, using nuclear bombs. And one thing that was done was um, this guy that um, I don't really want to get into him, but. Um, he used the peace sign as for the flag signals. Um, the N and the and the D for nuclear disarmament, or basically get rid of nuclear weapons, um, make the symbols of this and this. That's how you make them with the flags. Um, you know, when you're flag signing and whatnot? So N and D. So that makes, if you look at it, a peace sign. Okay. Um, however, before he ever used it for that, the peace sign had already gotten a lot of different use from in... Um, from the neuronic cross we talked about with Peter being hung upside down, symbolic of, of uh, Christians uh, needing to die in order to bring about peace. Um, also, uh, it, it was used in Satanism, Hinduism, and other areas of the cult before he ever used it for that for that traditional peace sign. So people were, I mean, even Christians nowadays were, were, sign, were shirts and stuff with peace signs. And the oldest dating of we, that we can of the peace sign suggests more of satanic stuff than good things like peace. So that brings up the question, what about the peace sign? Is it bad too? Because people nowadays may not understand it's, it's, it, where it comes from. But, see what I mean? So does, is it still wrong? Is it, does the thing itself have meaning or is it just what the popular culture says that it's used as? I'll give you one more example. The pentagram that's used, in, you know, in the cult. What if they stopped using it and it be, and we started using it for something else? Would it lack its evilness then? And could we use it then? Just think about these things. I 
I think it falls underneath like the Buddha. Okay. A lot of people have Buddhas in their house. Okay. They don't realize what they're really used for. And it ultimately it's an idol. Okay. And I, so how does that apply to the upside down crosses, the tattoos, and the peace sign? Well, because Buddha has come so much in our culture now. If you don't have a Buddha in your house, it's like you don't have a Buddha in your house. You know, it's so common. It's like a Christian wearing the peace sign on their shirt. It's, it's, it's common practice. So are you saying that it's okay to wear the peace sign or that it's not okay to wear the peace sign? I'm saying it's not okay. Okay. All right. It's not okay because why? Because even though a lot of people think it's okay now, it's what what it means <coughs> if you get down to where, where, where it came from and what a lot of people still use it for. Okay. If... If we went to, I think if we went to like Africa, and absolutely nobody has ever seen a peace sign before, I think it would be okay to wear it there. But in America, we have a cult and different things that still use it for, for you know, getting rid of Christians, you know, have peace and getting rid of Christians type thing. Okay. And so I think if there's still a group around you that uses the item as a bad thing, we shouldn't touch it. Okay, so going back to the Buddha idol, what happens if Buddhists no longer use the Buddha idol? Idol, do you think it'd be okay to have the Buddha and Buddha idol in your house? If it's not used for Buddha anymore. Not in America, or not anywhere that Buddha used to know. Not okay, let's say it's been hundreds of years since Buddhists used it. Nobody remembers where it came from. They just have this idol. Go. I think it'd be okay at that point. Okay. Why do you think it'd be okay? Well, for one, you don't, you won't have anybody coming into your house and say, "Wow, why do you have that in your house?" Okay. So you won't be, you won't be causing anybody to sin or cause anybody to think that you're not fully really safe. Okay. And then two, because at that point, it's just an item. It's just like the sun. People worship the sun inside Egypt, but we still use the sun every day, you know. And in America, I don't, I don't know of anybody that worships the sun, but it used to be. So we should get rid of the sun. <laughs> right. So, I, I mean, like we have we have pictures of sunsets, you know. It's not like we're worshiping the sun, and anybody that walks in our house is not going to know about, you know. Okay, that's interesting. What What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Okay, so I have this, this jacket, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. When I bought it, well, I have a peace sign on it. Okay. Like from here, near, back, whatever the name is. When I bought it, I, to me, it looked pretty. I liked it. It was white and it was standing. I didn't know what a peace sign means, and okay. I really don't care what a peace sign means. So I'm still going to wear it. Okay. Now would I stumble, would I make somebody stumble because they know what it means and I still wear it? Because I really don't care what it means. Okay. I like the jacket. <laughs> so you don't think it's wrong? In my mind, I don't see anything wrong with it because okay. I don't I don't know what a peace sign means and I really don't care what okay. it means. So I'm still gonna wear the jacket. All right. So what you do you think about I mean? the, the about the Buddhist thing then? The idol. The thing, the item. Like now or like a hundred years from now? In the same scenario that I gave Gracie where, where nobody knows about it anymore. And it's to me, a, a Buddha sign, it's like an ugly thing, so I really don't want it in my house. <laughs> Just because it's ugly. <laughs> I mean, you can't argue with that. <laughs> I mean, who would want that in their house? <laughs> I don't care if it's an idol or it's just a statue. <laughs> Bash and Eve <Diva> over here. <laughs> Sorry, but I mean, that's how I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, I mean, I'm trying to find. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find a way to to veer this into a a probing question. I just don't know how to under that. I mean, what do you do with that? <laughs> uh, okay. Let's say you like the way that the KKK robes look. Mm -hmm. Would you wear that if you like the way that they look? What's that? A what? KKK? You don't, no? It's KKK. Okay. Um, let's say. <laughs> let's say. Um, um, what about a uh, dream catcher? Okay, that's another good example. Let's say you like the way that it looks. No, I don't. No, hypothetically, you like the way it looks. <laughs> what am I? We don't have to wear that or she don't like anything. <laughs> Why am I asking the, 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 the fashion diva anything? Well, oh, I my gosh. I have one in my house. I did have one in... Well, yeah, I had one, one or two, but, like, big ones in my house when uh -huh. I got married. Well, at first, I didn't know what they meant, and I still didn't like them. They were like, why are you having this? This is so ugly. And Joe's like, no, it's not ugly. It's pretty. I bought it, whatever, you know. But he didn't know what it meant either. I'm like, well, we're getting rid of it because I don't like it. And then later on, like, like, you know, I started working at the school and I'm like, oh, these are dream catcher. I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh. And then they told me what it means. I'm like, oh, my. I'm glad I don't have that in my house <laughs> still, you know. Hmm. So, I don't know. Okay. Do you guys have I think it's it's it it's certain things I'm okay having them in my house. If if I know what they are, I don't want them in my house. But if I don't know and they look pretty, I really don't care. I will have it in my house. <laughs> what do you guys have to say? My opinion. I think it's based on personal belief. Okay. And just based on person to person, just depending. On how okay. you see it, and even knowing the true meaning, you know, things can change over time. Uh -huh. Meaning can change over time, so. Okay. I, I just think it's based on personal opinion. Okay. So it's pretty much just if you have a problem with it, whatever, and if you don't, whatever. Okay, all right. Ben? Um, I, I, I think that we So in the example of uh, of the Buddha that I gave, that I gave first, what's your opinion? I don't think that necessarily something bad's going to happen to you or that because you have it. Um, okay. I, I think that a lot like Ben said, if you find out that it is something um, and it could cause someone upset or that, you probably shouldn't have it. Okay. All right. So I guess I'll probe this a little bit deeper. If people don't know a symbol's origin, is it still wrong? These are just rhetorical questions, so just think about them as I'm saying them. Um, if you don't, if people don't know a symbol's origin, is it still wrong? What if it hasn't been used in that way for years? We talked about that just now. What if it is only used in a negative way in some circles, like for instance this, the uh, uh, neuronic, uh, the upside down cross? Should we stay away from symbols that were once wrong, or only those which are now wrong? Just think about these things. Um, 
<laughs> would you like as like my opinion or no? No. Sure. Okay. Now this is my opinion. All right. I think that it has to depend on what its um, what its construction was for originally. For instance, uh, an idol I think should never be a part of a Christian's household because that's what it was constructed for, regardless of what what other people hold it to. You know what I mean? Um, when when God was t giving the law to the Israelites and He talked about not having the idols, it kind of goes against what what God was trying to tell them to say. You know, okay, what if we just have it and don't you, you use it? You know, my my opinion, my opinion is okay if you guys don't agree with me. Okay. Um, uh, but it just kind of seems kind of counterproductive um, to allow things into your life and into your household that um, don't really – weren't created for good things. You know what I mean? Like the peace sign. There, there's nothing wrong with upside down cross in the first place. As the Catholic, uh, Catholic Church has shown us, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, but – and some, some people use the free rules. It's like, ah, who cares? You know what I mean? I, I don't use a variable, whatever. In pop culture, people usually think that it just means peace. So I really couldn't care any less. But then there's some things that their, their, their whole construction was for evil. Like, for instance, the, the, the Buddha, um, the, the, the Kachina, um, uh, the, the tattoos on, on, on the Egyptian. Tattoos are not inherently evil, just like a gun is not inherently evil. You know what I mean? The Egyptians decided to use it for evil. And under the context of Leviticus, I still hold to my theory that he's just talking about not doing the things to worship the pagan gods. That's my opinion, though. Once again, you can disagree with me. Um, the Upside Down Cross, it, it, it started out as a way of saying not less than worthy than Jesus. See, I mean, is, is that wrong? No, just because a satanic group decides to use it doesn't make it wrong. It just means they decided to use a Christian symbol. The... Uh, the um, uh, the whole Jesus fish thing with the whole Darwin fish. Well, or we we can't use the Jesus fish anymore because atheists use it for, used it for for the Darwin theory. See, I mean that's a little bit of a stretch. But if something by its design and its creation was for the purpose of neglecting and rebelling against God, I don't see that it has any place in, in a Christian's house. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Is that do, you guys kind of see what I'm saying? My opinion though. Okay, so that takes us to the idea of Jewish violence. Um, you know, apparently Jewish um, religion is extreme. The the Jewish religion is extremely violent. Um, since Israel was called to mass genocide in the Bible, doesn't that make it a violent religion? What do you guys think? Well, so people would say. Well, the Jews were called in the Bible to kill the Canaanites. They were called in to go in mass genocide. Mm -hmm. But yet, do you have you have a problem with Hitler killing Jews or uh, uh, um, uh, ra um, radical uh, Islamists killing people? How do you justify the two? Or the Christians were were even in, in the Crusades? What do you guys think? We go to war with other countries, so does that mean that we are a violent country? Right, but we're talking about in, in regards to religion. You understand what I'm saying? Or? I, I see it as the same. Okay. We're a group of people. The religion is a group of people. Okay. Anything else? I I honestly think any religion can be violent. Okay. Uh, I think it just depends on how you see it. What do you mean? Like. Again, with Hitler, like some people saw that as a bad thing, but some people saw it as, I guess, a good thing. Okay. But I think it just depends on basically what happened and why and just kind of okay. like the facts surrounding it. Okay. 
So, can you kind of elaborate a little bit, like, what you mean? It's okay. Take your time. Um, I think that like there are sometimes Christians that do well and kill people. Okay. But there's a, I like I said, it could happen in any religion. Like I think it just depends on the situation, and just depending on like, let's say a police officer goes and kills a murder. Okay. And he's Christian, but everybody starts attacking him because of his religion. Okay. And just that kind of situation. Okay. She was, th- she was saying as a, as a whole, religions aren't necessarily um, bad. It's just maybe the individuals in the religion that, that maybe take things. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody else? What are your thoughts? I think it goes back to... The book they go by. Okay. Like, what do you mean? Like, with the Bible. All throughout the Bible, it's... Oh, no, we're talking about Jewish, not Christians. <laughs> well, you can use the Old Testament. Okay, yeah, Old Testament. And over and over again, it, it shows God's love for, for us and for people. And... Well, the Quran that does, though, too. It constantly yeah. says, you know, he's, he's merciful and everything. And... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the people that... God told them to, you know, go do mass genocide against for the people that were sinning against him, right? Well, that yes, were, that yes. He, he gave them warnings. But and remember, remember that if you don't believe the Bible, all it sounds like was they justified going out and killing all kinds of people. Yeah. Like maybe well, we would jump on a on a Muslim for doing. Right, but say in the Muslim in the Muslim scrolls or whatever, they the they Quran. have on their. They don't have a very loving God on their, in their scrolls. Right, but remember, there's a few things. Uh, first off, remember that then the argument would be um, you have to understand the Quran in its setting that it was originally written for. You have you can't divorce it from its context, the same as we would say now for the Bible. Uh-huh. That's exactly what they would say there. Not, not all Muslims are violent. Yeah. Oh, no, no I'm not saying all Muslims are violent. I'm saying, I'm saying the book that they believe in. Okay. Well, that's the same thing like uh, the call is saying with Christians. The Bible is not violent, but yet you have well, Christians that go and blow up um, abortion clinics. Right, but then at the same time, you did have the Jews killing a lot of people in, Can- in Canaan, and you do have um, some Muslims killing people. So you have people. to take the whole thing in context you can't just pick out parts and pieces but they were specifically told by god to kill people right you're 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 taking something out of context but it's a yes or no kind of thing right like were they were they told to kill the people or or no i'm not gonna answer that question because it's out of context (laughs) okay so answer the question then put it into context for me (laughs) like it's fine, I'm Grace. I'm just trying to probe the question. I'm not the bad guy. Jeez. <laughs> God doesn't go tell us to blow up abortion clinics anymore. He doesn't go tell us to go destroy Rome anymore. That was a thing that was happening for a little bit of time, and it was because... Jewish violence, not Christian violence. Yeah, I know, but we're saying religions, right? Well, specifically Jewishness, but okay, go ahead and roll with it. So back when there were... The Jews were, were, you know, before the Christians, everything happened. No, it's fine. No, 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 no. Keep going. Back then, you were saying? No, because I, I had this conversation with some... Uh, with and some it's bringing people. up the irritation from that argument? Yes, I gotcha. Well, okay, so hold on. Real where quick. Where they took it out of context where they said that God said, go smite these people. And, and he's like, we should go kill all the, the Muslim immigrants that are trying to get into America. And it's like, hold on. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Hold on. I didn't say these things, Grace. Huh? I was just trying to probe the question. <laughs> Do you need a minute? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm okay, all right, all right. Sorry. Well, there's one mad. Can I make the rest of you mad before we close this out? You can try. <laughs> I can try. Does anybody else have something to say? <laughs> I, I, I don't think it makes them violent religion. Because they're not violent religion. They're violent religion. Okay. Um, it was just a specific instance. 
Okay. So then I imagine the reason you would go something like this. What would be their reason for not killing other people who are um, uh, wicked people, according to the Bible's view of, of wicked? Do what? And that and that's where you would lead that. Okay, all right, that's fine. I'm not disagreeing or criticizing. Anybody else has something to say? So, I think as like. I'm not saying myself, but I think a person's argument would be, so the Muslims, the ones that just attacked um, London, they're justified because their God told them to go attack them, right? Well, then other people would inevitably say, well, they told uh, uh, Muhammad told them at that time to do that. Right. So then they would use the exact same thing that we just used at that time, not for nowadays. So they're just acting acting like a, a radical. But London was just a couple months ago. Uh, let me say it differently. Um, we just used the argument that Jews nowadays aren't necessarily violent by a, as a religion. They, right. it's in the context it was a one time kind of thing. So the same thing could be said again about the the radical Islamists too. Um, they, as a whole, aren't violent now. It's just that that at that time they were told to, and the people who are being violent now are just taking the taking the Quran after out of context. Does that kind of make sense? I see what you're saying. Okay. Do we want to press ahead, or is there anything left, left that we can milk from this question? <laughs> Um, so a few things. Uh, first off, which should never be be forgotten, even though this is an answer that really only – well, let me just kind of keep going. God gave them chances to repent, but they continued in evil actions. He specifically told Abraham at one time that he had – that, that they still had some time left. He said their iniquity is not yet completed, so he, Israel is going to be spending 400 years in Egypt. You know I mean, so he did specifically say stuff like that, and then he said um, later on about how they had continued generation after generation, um, which takes us into an area um, that is seldom talked about in Christian circles in a correct doctrinal way, God's wrath and justice, which lucky for you guys, we'll be talking about that next week. We'll be talking about God's wrath and, ju uh, and ju uh, justice, um, something that's oftentimes just completely – you have you have two, two perspectives. One person – doesn't even mention it. I mean, they never talk about it. And then you have other person who just always talks about how God's just waiting to, to, to destroy people and how everything that happens is, is God's judgment on, on the on the country. Like uh, New Orleans, was that was God's judgment. Don't worry about it. It's God's judgment. Uh, every hurricane that ever hits, even when a hurricane hits every year in the same place, it's God's judgment. You know, everything is God's judgment. Everything. Everything. The tsunami in uh, – where was that? Uh, the Philippines, I think, is what? Oh, I was talking about like uh, seven years ago, about somewhere around there, oh, in like yeah, the Philippines or something like that, or Thailand or somewhere. No, there was some people in Japan several years ago. Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. Both of them. Uh, that was God's judgment, of course. And you know, uh, Obama, President Obama, that that's God's judgment too. And like that dream that I had a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, some things are are obviously God's judgment, obviously. Okay, and then there's other things that, that are not, and some things are, are caused from, from Satan, some things are caused from, you know, there's a lot of different reasons that things happen. Um, we should be always be very careful to say, yes, the 50 people who were killed in Orlando was because God was so tired of them, and so he decided to kill the homosexuals. Okay, that's something. Um, God gave them chances to repent, but they continued in evil actions. Um, and remember that God didn't take it lightly, either. Um, but also remember that this was an example for us because God's wrath will be poured out for all sin. There, there will be a day of judgment. There will be a time when, <laughs> when, when, when the world is held accountable for for its evil. That, that is the thing that's happening. But rather, this should point us to the mercy rather than the judgment. You know what I mean? Which God's justice is dependent on His love and mercy. They're, they're not, not one. One isn't greater than the other. They're both equally God. Does that make sense? Um, 
Israel was at one time was one time called to attack one group of people for a specific reason and to warn other nations of their sin. So just as an example for a one time kind of thing. Okay. Um, so if you were arguing for um, uh, Islam, you would say um, that the uh, the prophet, um, great and blessed be he, <laughs> just kidding, um, that the prophet was told uh, his followers at one time to strike back, and that that doesn't necessarily justify nowadays. In which case, you'd have to study the rest of the Quran to see what um, how they should be acting nowadays after that situation. That makes sense. So, um, so I think when it all comes down to it, uh, I don't remember who said this, but um, it comes down to I think it was Nicole. It's not necessarily that necessarily the, the um, Jewish or or Islam, it, it, the Jews or, or the or the Muslims are necessarily violent. It's just how people take things, you know, just how Christians use Old Testament to. Beat other people, you know, over the head, or to call people to judgment by yelling at them in Walmart parking lot or uh, Target. Target parking lot, uh, you know, or things like that. It's like, well, you know, there's there's always going to be those people. However, you have to look at what the scripture itself says. See what I mean? You have to go back to scripture. So that the real argument becomes between Muslim and and and, and the Jews, the Israelites, is. Um, I think I'll just move on. Christians were, were told not to be violent for his sake, however. So anything that Christians um, nowadays resolve to, oh, I have to be violent for the sake of Christ, is disproven by Matthew 26, 52. Where Peter goes to take and cut off the ear, and Jesus says specifically that if they are going to live that way, they will be dying that way, and that um, that's not the way that his kingdom is going to work. Remember that. Um, so Christians aren't justified in violence today. They were specifically told not to. As if the thing that Gracie said about it being a, a time frame specific in the Old Testament anyways didn't, you know, go well. And as if, you know, the million, hundreds of times that it says, you know, to forgive your enemies and uh, to bless those who persecute you didn't uh, meet. Um, and as a side note, that would be a good area of discussion between um, Islams and Christians, um, is the way that um, the, the Islamics, the, the Muslims, they were, they, were, um, they were mistreated. And so what the Prophet told them to do was retaliate in, in, in violence. Christians are, are, are treated against, and they're told specifically not to retaliate. That's that's important. Also, um, uh, Christians are told to you know pray for their enemies and whatnot, whereas the Muslims in that in that passage, that specific passage, were told to be violent back. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of interesting interesting dialogue, dialogue possibilities. Once again, if you don't turn it into an argument, however. Um, so, anyways, that takes us to horoscopes. Are horoscopes wrong? I don't read them. Are they wrong, though? No idea. Well, that's honest. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I would say yes, because it falls in the fortune tell. Okay. Okay. Are you going to add anything to it, or? Fortune telling is like witchcraft, and witchcraft is bad. So. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to add anything? What do you guys think? Jack? I would say yes, they were wrong. Why? Because you are relying upon something other than God for like life guidance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, they're not true anyway. Well, not necessarily. Uh, Pastor gives a great example. Uh, how he went to a fortune teller one time, and they and he told him specifically what day his life was going to change, and on that day he got saved. 
this wasn't a Christian person. This was this was a this was a fortune teller. So it was very much so true. See what I mean? Not all of them are, are necessarily quote unquote phonies, and then some of them just kind of play. If you guys know what a mentalist is, yeah. um, some of them just kind of play off what you are rolling on your face conduct. So I don't know. And the Bible doesn't say that they are false. It just necessarily. It just says that they are uh, not to go to them. Okay, so that's something to think about. Uh, were you gonna say something, Nicole? I think as long as you just, because I know sometimes I do read a horoscope just for fun, mm -hmm. just to kind of see what it says. Okay. I think as long as you don't take it to heart and really rely on that. Okay. For your future, I think I don't see anything wrong with it. Okay. What do you think, Ben? Um, I, I, I I think they're wrong. Okay. All right. Well, okay. What about games like Ouija boards? What's Ouija boards? Uh, it's it's about a board about like this, and it has different letters on it. It has yes and no. I think some are pure. I think. Um, and basically, the idea of it is um, you and your friends put your hands on it, and you ask uh, questions, and it'll answer. Basically, that's the idea of it. Um, however, um, it's it's tied to seances and that kind of stuff. So, what do you guys think? Go ahead, Nicole. I, I think they're bad. Okay, all right. Why do you think they're bad? Um, it has been proven that they do open up portals to, okay. to the spirit world and that a lot of evil things can happen. Okay, all right. And I also learned that burning them is a very bad idea. Burning them? <laughs> it makes things worse. <laughs> <laughs> ben, what do you think? Um, I, I, I don't think we should try to contact the dead or, or uh, spirits. Okay. No, in, in a way we or okay. what do you think? You, you don't know what a Ouija board is, so I probably shouldn't ask you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I just assumed you did. I didn't have a definition prepared. Does anybody have, they, have they a more accurate? Like, the idea is that they're talking to the spirit world and they're trying to get information from spirits or talk to dead loved ones and stuff. But a lot of people see it as just a game. Yeah, just to freak them out or whatever. Right, like my, my, my grandparents, for instance, uh, see it as just a game. So, in fact, they bought my mom one. How'd she like that? Uh, at first? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Gracie, did you did you give an answer? I didn't. I, mean, I think they're bad. Okay, why do you think they're bad? Um, well, for one, you don't want to open the door. Okay. Like, um, for instance, one time I was on a missions trip in Mexico, and uh, our guide wanted us to go out to this um, idol thing they had um, standing on the street just to show us one of the things that they worship in the in Mexico and it was like the skeleton thing and everything and I remember seeing uh, candles you know like they have like the uh, Mary candles for mm -hmm. Catholicism mm -hmm. they had those type of candles but with the skeleton on it in the stores and stuff. it was really weird anyway it turned out that one of the girls got um, messed with with one of the demons it, it kind of what do you mean by messed with elaborate um, possessed? not possessed because she's a Christian um oppressed it um it was kind of like uh she was laying down and she felt like these big hands holding her down and she, and then it was like on her chest and she couldn't breathe and then um she started praying and then finally it let her let her up and we all had to get out of the van and pray and everything to uh get the uh air cleared but um i think just like us we just went out to the thing to just look at it we didn't do anything with it we just looked at it I think just like the Ouija board, it has to do with demons and spirits and stuff. You do realize that you just said it wasn't a the Buddha idol wasn't a, wasn't a big deal. You just said then. How do you justify Ouija board being bad, but you don't justify the Buddha idol being bad? No, I said okay. So a thousand years from now, nobody knows what the Buddha is. It's just a. Okay, so let's say the same for the Ouija board. A thousand years from now, everybody stops using it. 
Well, there's instructions in the video. Okay, game. then the skeleton from Mexico, a thousand years ago. Well, from that's now. just like um, a skeleton on the shirt. Okay. Well, is it the same skeleton from Mexico? No. Okay. So, hypothetically, the instructions are lost. Ouija board, thousand years from now. Nobody's used it in a thousand years. Go. Well, I mean, the layout of the Ouija board, what are you, what are you going to do with it? Are you saying it's not wrong then? No, I mean... Like, like I, I'm, I'm not criticizing. I'm, I want you to, to ask the question. I'm crazy. I'm not disagreeing with you. I just want you, I want you to... What's your thoughts? Okay, so how the Ouija board is set up is, from what I've seen on TV, is it's a board with the letters. Okay. And then you have, like, this circle thing, and you go towards the letters to answer your questions. Okay. Well, a thousand years from now, if someone's playing the game and they don't have any instructions... What are they going to do with it? There's not really much they can do with play with it. It's not going to be relevant to them. Okay. So then it wouldn't matter. No, I mean, like, for all they would know, it's like an antique, and they'll have it up on their wall as an antique. And at that point, they don't know what it is. Nobody around them knows what it is. They just hmm. see it as an antique. Well, it's not going to have anything, anything with them at that point. Huh. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just wanted you to fully go through your answer. What are your guys' thoughts? I mean, th these are some interesting thoughts you guys are saying. Chuck, did you give an answer? No. What do you think? Um... I think, I think basically the same thing like I thought before, that if you know its purpose, that you probably should not have it around. You okay. You shouldn't mess with it. Um, if you don't know its purpose, and you're not using it for its purpose, I, I don't really see what it's going to, what it's going to do. Okay, so let me ask two questions um, about both of them. Um, the first thing you said was, if you know its purpose, don't do it. But what does it matter if you're a Christian and you're not worshiping it? If you know its purpose, and you yeah, play with it yeah, as a you, but yeah, but you're not you're not worshiping or anything. I mean, because you're still you you talk to it and stuff. Okay, and you're still. Yeah, talking with the spirits. So then if you don't know what it's for and you're still doing it, how is that any better? If you don't know what it's for, how would you still be doing it? Well, I mean, like, with instructions and stuff. Like, y y maybe you don't really understand. Maybe, like, for instance, you don't you don't believe in, the sp in demons and stuff like that, or spirits or whatever. I'm pretty sure the instructions talk about that. Specifically? You mean just, like, so. you're playing around with it? Yeah, like yeah, around? yeah. Like, and you're not asking me questions, or what? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to do anything then. Okay. If you're not using it for its purpose. Okay. I'm really enjoying this, guys. Because you would have to know what its purpose is, wouldn't you, to use it for its purpose? Yeah. Yeah, but if once again, if you don't really believe in those kinds of things, well, then you're not a Christian. <laughs> well, no, I mean like, like okay, let me give you an example. The Corinthians were eating food sacrificed to idols, even though they knew that the idols weren't weren't anything, and Paul still told them not to do it, just because of you know some other person. What if they would have eaten in private though, like where nobody would have seen? Like, see, I mean the same thing. Kind of, I think kind of applies here. I mean, is it really that bad? Like, you know what I mean? If, if you know what it's for, I think so. Okay. What about watching movies about witchcraft, or they have witchcraft things in them? Like, for instance, let me let me kind of. Um, Paranormal stuff. Right. 
Right, like like uh, horror movies with, with, with ghosts and stuff, or maybe something with a demon like um, Exorcist, or maybe um, um, those uh, those Jack the movies that came out with the uh, with the satanic rituals in them, Which in like the eighties and stuff. Uh, I can't remember what their names were called. Oh, I had the guy from Lord of the Rings. In the oh, no, yes. that's the first one. That doesn't have it. I'm talking about the ones um, that came out after that in like the seventies and eighties and stuff. Um, and they had satanic rituals in them, the black mass, uh, stuff like that. Um, do you think there's any anything wrong with watching movies with that stuff in it? I mean, it's not like you're partaking of it. What do you guys think? My opinion on it. Yes, go ahead. Is that most of those types of movies make you scared? Okay. And they give you a fear that. It's really hard to take away. Okay. Like, you're laying in your bed at night, and you're like, oh, no, there's something that's coming towards my bed. You know, you're scared. Or, yeah, but I number... See, I, see, I see that person in the in the, in the the corner, or I see the symbols on my ceiling. Yeah, something. but the number 23 did that to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so those types of movies instill fear in you. Okay. And... Is there anything necessarily wrong with that? Yes, because... We're not supposed to be fearing anything, and so I think when we start fearing things, it takes away from the power of God with us being Christians. I think it makes us think that the devil's more powerful than God. Okay. I think it um, takes away our belief in God a little bit. Okay. What do you guys have to say about that? I don't think it's okay to watch. Okay, why not? Because, first of all... If you're watching, I'm either enjoying what Satan is doing. Okay. Instead of. How? What? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean when you watch it. Well, let's say even if you don't get scared, it's still creepy though. Uh huh. And if you're still watching it, that that means you're kind of like it plays in your mind like you're still believing. I'm like ooh, I like this, even though it's wrong. Even though God said not to, because yeah. you're giving Satan a foothold okay. of, of that. Even paranormal, par I used to watch paranormal little episodes. Uh huh. It, until one night, of course, it happened, and then I heard and in a, in a, uh, somebody said, I think on TV, I was watching like a religious documentary or whatever, it, it, that it says specifically not not to watch it because. You're letting the Satan get a hold of you, and then you're like starting to enjoy more and more. And I noticed that the more I watched it, the more I wanted to watch it. Okay. And then you can't get rid of it. And, and you know, that's what Satan wants. He wants you to enjoy him. Well, what about movies? What about movies with with with, with just enormous amounts of, of violence and cussing? I mean, that's in essence the same thing. It's, yeah, I mean, you're still enjoying. I still oh, so you think that's wrong too? I don't watch it because I think it's wrong. Oh, okay, all right. I don't like all the killing and all the. I was trying to probe her with a deeper question, but she agreed with it, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people like it because I mean it, it's it's funny. Mm -hmm. To some people, it's creepy. Okay. You know, like you guys enjoy the the what are they called? I don't know. I want to enjoy this though. I I want to ask. The guys, they're dead guys, but they're white. Oh, zombies! The zombies. Like oh. to me, that's creepy. Oh. I, I'm scared to death of them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you are. That's nice to know. Are we looking at just as zombies? Yes, <laughs> yes, we are. To me, it's wrong. To and gather else, around the door. Wrong, you know. Okay. I don't know. All right. So, uh, are you are you saying that you think it's a little bit more relative to your personal tra tastes? I would say so, yeah. Okay, all right. Nicole? It's kind of hard for me to answer this question because I watch horror movies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Like, I think it just depends on which movie you're watching okay. and, the, and the whole basis of the movie. So can you give me a positive and a neg negative example? A negative example would be anything that has to do with exorcism. Okay. Just anything that deals with demonic activity, I think. Okay. And a positive? It's like the scary movies. They're just mocking. Like a thriller. Yeah, like just thrillers. I oh, okay. Okay, but like movies that really deal with demons and stuff. I okay. Think. All right. 
to, to go off of Diana's end, of course, I think it also depends on if something like that could happen and if something like that can't happen. Like, zombies, for instance, I know that zombies will never happen just because it's not scientifically possible. But, like, you say that now, but wait until the, 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 the end attacks. <laughs> <laughs> wait until the attacks. So, like, when the cool thing, the, not, the, the demonic activity, demonic, that can happen. And it happens a lot, and a lot of people don't realize that it does happen. Hmm. Yeah. You know? And I think that with those, it just opens the door for us to get further. I, 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 like I, I do have something that might uh, might apply to this. Um, I'll let you guys decide. Um, there's a lot of people who come from a background of alcoholism where we just tell them, don't drink any alcohol whatsoever. And there's a lot of people who have, think, have like, recurring panic attacks and, 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 and uh, what do they call them? Uh, lucid dreams and all these different things, and so we tell them to stop watching any anything that has too much action, or, uh, not action, but um, a suspense in it, any kind, type of thriller or horror, that kind of stuff, just stay away from all of it, just to kind of help you calm down. Uh, same as we tell them not to drink coffee, too. Just everything to get that out of your system, just to kind of help you to, to kind of clear your thoughts. Maybe that has something to do with what you guys are talking about, maybe not. Whatever. Ben, what do you think? Oh, I Sorry. That's basically telling me that I need to hurry up. Go ahead. I, I, I think it's a pretty question. Okay. I, I, I got a question for Christy. Uh, <laughs> with, with, with the, um, that it's not good to be afraid. Barnabas was wrong! Why do you keep bringing this up? <laughs> but, but, like, um, a, a horror movie about a home invasion, um, would it be, in your opinion, wrong to watch that? It's not. I mean, it's going to scare you. Yeah, Gracie, you are the one who won't even go shopping at night because you're like, I'm going to get raped! Oh my yeah. god, my parents! And so if you're watching it, you know, and get scared, um, is, is it okay to watch that since it's not supernatural? I think if you're already scared of that, you should probably stay away so you don't get more scared. So if you're not, you should wait and see if you can get yourself scared of it? <laughs> Some people aren't scared, like, at all. That kind of I, thing, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, Gracie. <laughs> like... My parents think, like, my going the same. I hate going shopping at night because my parents grew up watching the movies where people get stalked and then they get raped. I don't watch those anymore. <laughs> so I think it depends on the person. I, I, I guess my, my question is, is it is it okay to get scared for entertainment purposes? I think if you're just scared for that moment, I think it's okay. But if it's, like, a lifelong, you're going to be scared, I don't think so it's okay. So if you can watch a movie about demons in it, it affects you right then in that moment for entertainment purposes. Is it still and, and not after that? Same principle, well, Grace. Well, no, because I remember I agreed with 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 what I said with Nicole. I think there's a difference between what things can happen and what well, well, okay. it just goes back that, to like that the does. Ouija board. You know, if 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 you're watching something with demon possessions in it, I think it kind of opens you up to. So you, you read about in the Bible about demon possessions. Right. But you read about God casting the demons out. You don't read about the head Gen spinning around. Generally, the in, in, in the horror movies, I mean, the demon gets cast out. <laughs> like, exorcism is actually the demon being cast out? Exorcism? At, like, what, the very end, probably? <laughs> well, I, I've never seen it. I don't know. Ask somebody around. What about the demons that cast out the seven sons of Sputa? Uh, hold, hold on a second, Ben. What is that? The demons that ran the seven sons of Skiva out naked, they never got cast out. What are we talking about? Seven sons of Skiva. Uh, Skiva. Is this a movie? No, no, no in, in the, the Bible. Bible. <laughs> if they said, Paul I know, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. Oh, yes, okay, all right. They never know. got cast oh, out. Oh, my God, now I know what we're talking they about. They ran the guys out <laughs> naked. Okay, okay, but what about like Frank Perry's books that are Christian? But Ooh, a good born. example. Good example. Demonic stuff does happen in many of his of his of his books. You should. They're really good. <laughs> They're really good, though. You you not? <laughs> you read that? <laughs> My opinion on the demonic movies is just like the Ouija board. Is if you're messing with demonic stuff, even when it's on the television, it can kind of get you used to the idea of demonic activity. And then you start looking for it, and then you start seeking for it. You, you watch things about zombies where they eat people. You start looking for people to eat. And Buddy, I already told you. Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> what no, no. I do though, do Ben. I get hungry for hands. People. Like, is that only reason you tell me that, that only hands can satisfy? satisfy? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
it would for somebody to watch a seance if that's going to cause them to want to have a seance. And they may believe that demons aren't real. Yeah. Just like you believe that zombies aren't real. That watching murders and zombies and stuff like that had that desire in you. And and going back to Diana's with it, it made her want to watch it. I don't think that's spiritual. I think that's called entertainment. That's how they make money. <laughs> They're gonna put stuff on there that you want to watch. To back back I think it's again. just the person's desire and how they get affected. I think if God personally convicts you, right. you should then you shouldn't watch it. But all watch what it. if I don't think that it's wrong to have sex with an animal? And God doesn't convict me not to. I think the Bible says not to. But that was the Old Testament. This is the New Time. New Testament time. Did he really have to put it in twice, though? <laughs> I think so. That's my question. <laughs> well, things are getting way too serious. I had to veer it away somehow. Goodness sakes, you people. Can I move on now, or is Ben done agonizing, or antagonizing Gracie? Do you have a comeback, Grace? Goodness sake, hey, huh? that was getting way too intense. I had to break it up. Sorry, guys. So we're going to look at a few passages here. <laughs> if Gracie has calmed down. Right. Do we need to put you into quarantine? Yeah. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 through 14. There shall not be found among you anyone who born, burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets remains or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord, and because of the abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God for these nations, which you are about to dispossess. Listen to fortune tellers and listen to diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. So I think that that kind of clarifies the whole issue with horoscopes. Now, what it says about movies and entertainment, and we're moving on. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> what? Oh, Isaiah 8, 19. Um. I mean, yes, yes, yes. They're wrong. Isaiah 8, 19 says this. Uh, and when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter... Should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? Um, I'm sorry, I said horoscopes. I meant Ouija boards. I think that kind of clarifies about the Ouija boards. My personal opinion is that it also does clar clarify about the horoscopes. However, doing it for entertainment purposes, I'm not so sure. I mean, I would still say, in my opinion, it's wrong. Because it's like, well, it's okay, God, because I'm enjoying doing it. You know? But what do you say about like the Ouija board Like, if you don't know what it's for? Ignorant, the Bible actually don't know what it's for. right, and the Bible actually answers that. It says, you know, if you don't, well, we can talk about this some other times if you guys are interested. But if you don't know what something is for and you still and you still have it, you're still held accountable for having it. Um, that's what the Bible says, and it does say about how, um, for lack of knowledge, my people are perishing. Well, if, if they had just known why they were perishing, maybe they wouldn't have perished. See you know what I mean? So once again, I think that it really doesn't come down to what you think or what you think, you, what you feel is right. I think it comes down to what the Bible says about it. And the Bible clearly says no about some things, you know what I mean? Um, for instance, it says to be immature in, 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 in the ways of evil, not to, not, to, not to know about the ways of evil. And things that glorify and build up the ways of evil just kind of, see what I mean? They just kind of, and I'm not talking about thrillers in general. I'm talking about things that have to do with demons specifically. We could talk about the other thing, like what you guys are talking about with the movies. I'm sure we could talk about it for weeks upon weeks. I'm not you talking about to. that, though. We're moving somewhere else. <laughs> um, let's see. And I think for now, I, I, I think we're going to just move on past that for now. Uh, we might come back to that maybe some other time if you guys wanted. But, um, I mean, wow. We were on that for a long time. Um, I do think that... Um, Part of what you guys were saying, um, I never thought of like that before, and I think part of what you guys were saying, um, I'd have to consider it before I agreed or disagreed. And I think part of what you guys are saying is stuff that's talked that's talked about in the Bible about not doing, but I think that because it's in the Old Testament, maybe, and you guys just aren't as familiar as how to apply that to nowadays, that maybe that's what's causing it. I don't know, but we'll worry about that some other time. Um, We'll worry about some other time. So that brings us to the question um, that is so often brought up. Can you lose your salvation? And I'm not talking about this the, the way we talked about it before. I'm talking about is there anything in the Bible that prevents you from being saved? 
Diana brought up an example a week or two ago. And you remember what your examples are? About losing salvation. I did? Mm -hmm. You brought up two things. Can anybody give, give me what they think? Um, can you lose your salvation? What do you guys think? Is there any way to go from Christian to not Christian without, obviously, um, walking away from it? Uh, <laughs> I'm really kind of surprised that she does. She's not saying. What do you guys you think? Give me a hand. I might think about it. Um, well, you said something that Jesus had said. That's a good hint. <laughs> I'm What's well, gonna be somewhere in the Gospels? <laughs> what do you guys think? Can a person lose their salvation? I don't think it'd be just like whoop. There went, you know. I think. I think when you become go from Christian to non-Christian, you. You make that decision. You don't just lose it. You make that decision that you no longer want to serve God. You already said you can't use that. So. Yeah, I was. I wasn't really talking about specifically walking away from salvation. I'm talking about something that you could do that would um, take uh, away salvation from you. Oh, like uh, you know, swimming up the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's one. Right. Where What's it, two? Is it is this blasphemy or is this the second one? Is it where the uh, second point? No, no, I'm oh. going to say, is where, like, uh, you know God did the miracle, but you say God didn't do the miracle? We'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the second thing. When you become, um, um, what is it called? Um, what is it called? Um, what is it called? Um, starts with A. Atheist? Yes. What? Atheist. When you don't believe in God anymore. Well, that would be the same as the original thing, walking away from from God. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, uh, it's not that you can lose your salvation, but once once you decide not to be a Christian and you die, even though you were saved, you know God is not gonna say, "Okay, you got a free trip to heaven just because." You got saved 50 years ago, but then you still did all these. You still have to repent. Right. So what are what's the second thing that's mentioned specifically in the Gospel of Matthew about losing out on salvation? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And number two was any guesses? And you don't have to be right. Just guess. Denying God. Uh, no, but good guess. Good guess. I guess we'll just have to come to it. Uh, Matthew 12, 22 through 37. You guys are going to want to turn there, turn there if you have your Bibles with you. Um, Grace, can we get some light? Matthew 12, 22 through 37. And I'll wait for you guys to... Wow, that did not help at all, did it? I'll wait for you guys to, to get there. Um, Unless we're waiting on Gracie. Oh my gosh. I'll go ahead and start reading. Um, then a demon <laughs> demon oppressed man <laughs> who was blind and mute. Well, she's all wandering around the house. <laughs> uh, who was blind and mute was brought to him and he healed him so that the man spoke and saw. And all the people were amazed. Now, you saw that, right? Everyone who has who is blind is demon possessed, right? <laughs> it's a joke. So that the man spoke and saw. All, uh, and all the people were amazed and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man cast out demons. Knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will this kingdom stand? his kingdom stand? And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or, 
How can someone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless his, he first binds a strong man? Then indeed he may plunder his house. Um, whoever, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Therefore, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Now, notice he said, therefore. That means everything that we've read directly relates with what we just said, right? right. So keep, keep, keep rolling with me here. Uh, and whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. And this is where people stop reading. This is, we're moving on to the next story, right? <clears throat> Wrong. This is the conclusion of what he's saying. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak, for by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. What he's saying here is actually very simple. The people have blown way out of context. What is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? In this context, he specifically says that the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is attributing to the Holy Spirit, I mean, sorry, to Satan, something that is God's work. See what I mean? Does that make sense? So, Satan cast out the demon. No, the Holy Spirit did. See what I mean? And and calling calling what is good is evil. He's bla that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But then he goes on to how do I know that I'm not gonna I'm gonna commit commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit? Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit will be bad. In other words, you can't accidentally blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense? If your heart is bad, the tree is bad. It will produce bad fruit. Does that make sense? This is not something that if you're worried about, you've done it. This is not something that um, you're going to accidentally stumble upon. It's something that he just clarified how you're going to do it. By your, the evilness of your heart being left unrepentant, you will do it. See what I mean? Uh, an example of this would be um, when people – well, that's a bad example actually. Um, so moral of the story is if you're a Christian, you're not actually accidentally going to do this. So I would argue that you cannot lose your salvation from blaspheming the Holy Spirit because if you're saved, you're probably not going to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. See what I mean? That kind of makes sense? So once again, people people get really weird with this one, and they try and tie it into denying Jesus and all kinds of different stuff. But Jesus clearly said if you deny me or if you you know, you know blaspheme me, it, you'll be forgiven that. If you blaspheme the Father, you'll be forgiven that. He even said, you know, if you deny me, and then he talks about repentance and all these different things. But he says specifically about blaspheming the Holy Spirit, specifically. So I think we can clarify that it has nothing to do with Jesus. It has to do about the Holy Spirit. See what I mean? But people get weird on this. Um, so if you're worried about it, you probably aren't doing it. Just throwing it out there. The Pharisees had it set in their heart to oppose God. And so eventually, through the course of opposing him, they committed sin. <laughs> Why is that surprising? Um, see, who is he talking to? Is he talking about Mr. Mr. Faithful to God? No, he's talking about people who thought that they were so righteous but had opposed God in their heart and thought it was all about some legalism, stu legalistic stupidity. Um, so uh, what did they do? What was their heart? I, I think I just clarified that. That takes us to Matthew 6, the other example of losing out on your salvation. And this is the one that I would I – would, I'll, well, I'll clarify after I've read it. Matthew 6, 14 through 15. Commonly called the Sermon on the Mount. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespass trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. I think that that pretty much said if you don't forgive people, you're not going to be forgiven. Yeah. Hence, you won't be saved, right? Right? I mean, doesn't that kind of make sense? However, that takes me to my next point here. Um, people who seek after God, you're still going to have a hard time combating attitudes with people. Okay, I'm not going to say that. You will always have a problem with attitudes because you're a person. However, the person who seeks after God, God has a way of changing their heart over time. This may take years, but God is working in that process to where you are able to forgive them. Once again, this could take years. Okay. It's the person who says, no, God, not going to listen to your promptings. I'm just not going to forgive this person. That's how it's going to be. And they to, they're, see what I mean? There's a hardening that happens definitive. Well, that shows that God isn't at work in that person's life. Therefore, shows that they probably aren't saved. See what I mean? 
because by our no by our by our, our deeds were that that speaks of our of our, of our faith. So, I mean, as James says, our works justify us because of the sense of if we have faith, we will do the works, not that works justify. Does that make sense? Okay. But obviously he does clarify what he was talking about. Um, well, no, I'll move on from that. Um, so those who seek after God may struggle, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, forgiveness will come in time. In time. In time. See, people think, oh, I've had a bad attitude towards this person for five years. Be patient. Keep seeking after the Lord. He'll, he'll bring it into your heart. He'll, he'll bring it by. What Jesus is talking about is, you know, nope, that's just the way it's going to be, God. See what I mean? You, you said in your heart, I'm not, you have set in your heart, I'm never going to forgive this person. Then you follow through and never forgive that person. You know what I mean? So, um, is cussing wrong? And I'm not really going to spend too much time on this um, uh, because we're so far down in time. Um a lot of cuss words actually originally meant something else, and then they just became something something bad. Like, I'll give you a couple examples. Um, the word bastard is actually a sword that was used a long time ago. Now you don't know that because people use it just flippantly to as a, as a slang to, against somebody. But it's actually a type of sword. See what I mean? Just like, um, what's another name of a sword? Ah, I forget. Um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but anyways, moving on. Um... They, but the, but they did develop into bad bad words over time, um, and cussing cuss words are are oftentimes used either derogatorily, or or what's what's how would you use that derogatively derogatively, uh, or um, in an angry angry or careless uh, setting. You know what I mean? Where you don't really you're not really thinking through. You're just saying something just offhand uh, because you're angry, you're flustered, or to degrade somebody. So that kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Uh, not every time is a cuss word used. It does this happen, but oftentimes this happens. So that in itself kind of says that we shouldn't do it regardless of whether we're cussing or not, right? We shouldn't be talking against somebody else, whether it's gossiping or cussing, right? Right, because we should be forgiving people, right? So the cuss word really isn't the issue in this setting, is it? It's it's it's, it's the attitude. heart, exactly. It's it's the attitude, not necessarily the words used. Um, and I would definitely say if if somebody if somebody is able to take you off that fast. You might want to have, you know, adjust your attitude. You might have an attitude problem. If somebody is within the span of a couple minutes able to get you to, to, to be yelling at them, that might be saying that there's something wrong with your attitude. Uh, anyways, um, so, and if you're going to say that cuss words are, are wrong, where's the line between cuss words and slang words? For instance, doggone it is actually just God, dang it, with the words flipped around. See what I mean? So how is doggone it okay, but God isn't? See what I mean? So if you're going to say cuss words are altogether not to be used ever, you should probably say follow that same principle and say that slang words then aren't, because slang words are then something that you're substituting for the cuss word, right? Be it darn it or gee whiz or gosh darn golly. It's still su substituting it for the bad word, right? So you're actually not fixing the problem. Because it's your attitude that makes a cuss word wrong, right? People have repeatedly used it in a wrong setting over and over again, and so in popular culture it's considered wrong, right? So is substituting it with a slang word all that much better? And I would argue no, because it's the same thing. It's just not seen by pop culture or those people as wrong, or as wrong. Or, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, yeah. Um, what about words like idiot, moron, or jackass? Where is the line? Where, where do you draw the line on, on what is, okay, this is acceptable, but this is not? See, I'm going to call this person an idiot, an idiot but you're not going to use words like hell. Well, I'm not sure that, that follows through. Now, I'm not saying you should be okay with cussing, but I'm saying if you're going to be not, if you're going to not be okay with cussing, you should follow that through and not be okay with slang words and calling people names either. They all kind of go hand in hand. Do you know what I mean? It really doesn't make sense to say, okay, well, because my culture understands this word that didn't even mean this originally, like the F word meant to slap. Like, so you could say, I will F you, and that would be, I'm going to slap you. But in popular culture today, it has either something to do with sex specifically, or just kind of like, I really don't like you kind of thing. You see what I mean? So... See what I mean? Words change over time, and you gotta you gotta figure out where your line is gonna set, where where your conscience tells you is wrong, and then follow that through. Um, 
and uh, but let me clarify a few things. The Lord's name in vain um, is not just saying God darn it. Okay, that that's what people nowadays see it as. Taking the Lord's name in vain is to um, take it upon yourself in a careless way. Like for instance, um, um, I swear by God that I will do this. Well, you just use the Lord's name in vain. See, I mean, you you've taken it flippantly. Um, you haven't shown his name respect or honor. That's what taking the Lord's name is. Any time that you um, use the Lord's name in a way that is not honoring to God. So then God, the cuss word, would obviously be um, – would follow under that. However, um, originally that's not exactly what they were talking about. Um, <clears throat> but then again, um, some people have even argued that irreverent worship or half-hearted service is both taking the, uh, taking the Lord's name in vain. Because you take the Lord's name, name – you know, as a Christian, and then you don't give serving him your all, so that's kind of taking it in vain. I, I don't know if I agree with that or not. I'm just saying what some people have said. So just something to think about. But then there's other words that, you, that when you think about, just think about kind of what they mean. Damn. A damn is something, a curse. So when you say damn it, you are saying curse this thing. See what I mean? So when you're saying God damn it, you are saying God, asking God to damn or curse something. See what I mean? Probably not a good idea. See what I mean? Just things like that because the Bible tells us not to return curses for uh, curses for curses, right? Probably not a good idea to specifically ask God to curse something. See what I mean? Especially not if not if spoken in a flippant way or, or a irreverent kind of way, just set at flung out there. We should really be careful with our words because Jesus just said in that passage, what did he say? By our words will be justified, and by our words will be condemned. When we say things, we're going to be held responsible for what we said, right? That's what Jesus just said. So I would, I would encourage you to examine your vocabulary. And I'm not saying don't use cuss words. You use cuss words. I'm just saying examine it and and see if you can, if you're okay with it. And if you are, you know, whatever. If you don't see anything wrong with the Bible with it, whatever. Um, I I personally am, am trying to get out of using slings um, or any kind of cusses or any kind of um, uh, name calling at all, which is surprisingly difficult to do. Surprisingly difficult to do. You know how many times on the road alone I call somebody an idiot? Just while I'm driving. Do you know how difficult it is to stop doing? It's, oh, oh. So, anyways, that's where I am at right now. Uh, Matthew 15, 10. Um, what's another one? Oh, here's another one that people oftentimes hold as saying is wrong, but I'm not quite sure if it really... I'll probably stop, try to stop using it just because people see it as wrong, but um, hell, like what the hell? Well, I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. I mean, in and of itself, maybe if the person you're talking to sees it as wrong, I'm, I'm not real sure. Um, but I know saying something in, the, in a different context, like go to hell, well, okay, that would be wrong. What? The heck? What? What's the heck? Yeah, see what I mean? It, it's like, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's not really harming any person. And see what I mean? So it's kind of like, well, I don't know. What I don't if know. you don't know the meaning of what you're saying? Well, you probably shouldn't say it. Then. <laughs> you probably shouldn't say it. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> uh, Matthew 15:10, um, and he called the people to him and said to him, "Hear and understand." Uh, what was I going with this? Um, okay, yeah, yeah. It's the next verse, right? It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth this defiles a person. So, um, once again, the cuss word in and of itself is spoken in a way that comes from uh, an angry heart. See what I mean? If people just used a cuss word in a sentence, it, it probably wouldn't have its, its connotation as it does nowadays. The F word wouldn't mean what it does today because it would be used as a descriptive word like couch. See what I mean? Couch isn't a cuss word. Why not? Because it's used in more of a, more of a conversational way. See what I mean? The F word could have potentially been used in the same way. Does that make sense? So, um, Luke 6, 27-28. Just some things to think about. I am trying to neither encourage you to or discourage you from cussing. I want you guys just to simply analyze what you're saying and what you think the Bible says about it. Okay? Uh, Luke 6, 27-28. Uh, But I say to you um, who hear, love your neighbors, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. So obviously you can't use some 
words and, and whatnot. Um, Ephesians 4.29. Some of these just kind of testify for themselves, so I'm not really going to spend too long in clarifying it. Um, 429 through 30. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So, once again, that kind of tells us that maybe we should be a little more careful with what we're saying or talking about. And also, um, other passages kind of bring up, you know, about... Um, don't be think think about things that are good and just and, and, and those kinds of things, you know what I mean? So that should obviously enter into the equation of, of what is right and good to say. Um, and it's not necessarily about the law, but it's about the idea of the law. We're, I'm not giving you a, a new Old Testament. I'm, t I'm giving you an idea of what the Bible talks about, okay? Um, so popular best words, I already talked about this Um the, uh, the uh, dam it's a curse so god would then be god cursed it um the f f word is originally meant to strike but now it obviously means something different um are you talking about that i already talked about that yeah <sighs> let me see how much more we have to go Yeah, this is looking really okay. This is the last slide. Do we want to just go through it, guys? Last slide. Yeah. Okay. Why do I go to church? Um, I was gonna have this as be as a discussion too. But obviously, if we have it as a discussion, it's gonna be probably knocked out to like nine. And I, I have to go get parts for the van tonight, so I, I really have to get moving. Um, first off, we go to church because of direction. Um, God directs his people through church. Um, if you notice, people who don't um, try to do Christianity just by themselves, first off, um, their theology, what they believe, gets all out of whack. They believe some really strange things. But then also... Um, they don't really have direction in the sense of expanding ministry. They just kind of have a, here I am uh, with this house study. You know what I mean? They don't, they're not going anywhere with their, with their Christianity. They're not witnessing to people. They're not worshiping God. They're just in this little rut of, of what's comfortable for me in my house. See what I mean? And so there, there's obviously that. But anyways, uh, Numbers 16, uh, 1 through 3. Um... Now Korah the son of Ezar the son of Kohath son of Levi and Dathan the Abiram the sons of Eliab and On the sons of Peleth sons of Reuben took men. Excuse me. And they rose up before Moses with a number of the people of Israel, two hundred and fifty chiefs of the congregation chosen from the assembly, well known men. They assembled themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, If you have um, you have gone too far, for all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourself above the assembly of the Lord? See, the answer is that he hadn't, God had, and that God was directing Israel through Moses. This obviously is the same kind of thing that happens nowadays in church. Yeah. We're not all pastors, are we? No, there's only one pastor, and we kind of, uh, then there's the, the, are we calling you guys the board, or are we calling you guys elders? What are we calling? Okay, those those guys, uh, Norval, uh, Melvin, Ben, you know, those guys. Um, they kind of are, the pastor kind of, you know, um, think of him as kind of like a final authority kind of thing, but then think of as the board, elders, deacons, whatever you want to call them, uh, bishops, if you will, I don't care. Um, they're kind of the, um, the accountability to the whole thing, and they help the more tangible, physical things become reality. Because oftentimes a pastor will become just too overburdened to be able to handle everything. Deacons are a great way to get stuff done. Uh, for instance, a uh, pastor had to set something up in the um, annex today, and Ben, a deacon or elder or bishop, whatever you call him, was there to help. See what I mean? And so helped something that was not really a possibility by himself become a possibility. Physical, tangible things. If you go to Acts, the ma main reason for them even being a thing was to help the, the, the pastors with the more um, 
laborious, laborious things so that the pastor could focus more on 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 presenting the word of God and, and, and those kinds of things. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, uh, but as far as can a pastor then do whatever he wants? No, he's still held to the, till the word of God, and he's also still held to the bylaws and that kind of thing. Um, pastor is uh, under the sums of God, so he also has to follow the sums of God rules. Um, but then also, um, uh, he was appointed, and that just because he was appointed doesn't mean that he dictates your entire life. For instance, you can take out a mortgage, and pastor has no say-so about that. You don't have to ask pastor before you buy a house. You don't have to ask him before you buy a car. He might give you good advice before you do those things. However, you don't have to. See what I mean? Make sense? So direction comes through the leadership um, yeah, as far as the church direction. Um, I guess I'm yeah, go ahead. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, uh, rebuke, and exhort uh, with complete patience and teaching. So that's Timothy, who is a pastor, about what his job is to do. And he just told about rebuking, exhorting, and encouraging all these things, right? Who was he rebuking, encouraging, and exhorting? The congregation. <laughs> <laughs> so Hebrews 12:17. Um, for you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the, mm, that's wrong, 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 wrong. That's just wrong. That's not. That's not right. Um, I hate it when I put the wrong passage down. What? Twelve seven? No. Maybe ten seventeen? No, that's not gonna be it. Okay, it's got to be it's got to be 10. I don't know. Two seventeen. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know what I was going. I don't know where I meant to put down, but I put down the wrong passage there. Um, to encourage and um, to to encourage one another and to be encouraged, a lot of times people say, "I don't go to church anymore because I don't need it anymore." Well, if you're really that mature and, and complete and spiritually whole, you should definitely be there all the more, so that the other people, all the rest of us weak ones, can be encouraged by your goodness. My great, someone I know uh, said this, and. Uh, I just couldn't believe it because that's totally selfish, and that shows in and of itself that you aren't really that spiritually mature if no, if other people's considerations didn't hit you. So it's not just to be encouraged, to be fed. It's also to fed to feed others. We encourage one another. Second Corinthians one through through four talks about being encouraged by God, so that then you can go out and encourage others. It doesn't say being encouraged by God so that you can hold, hoard that to yourself and never help anybody else in need. Um, Hebrews ten twenty two through twenty five. Uh, it says, um, Let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So obviously I think that's very evident that encouragement is on is on that list. Um, for spiritual growth, Acts 2.42 kind of clarifies this one. Um, and there's a lot of reasons uh, for meeting together as a church, so don't uh, don't think this is an exhaustive list. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, learning about the Bible, the fellowship, spending time together, to the breaking of bread or communion, and, and, and to prayers. These were all things that they did together. Okay. Um, to worship God and increase ministry... Well, that one, uh, Exodus 15, 1, is where um, Moses and the people of Israel sing this, uh, are singing after God has delivered them uh, from Egypt. Um, and then the last reason, because you are the church, not the place. You don't go to church, you are the church. We just simply meet in a building. However, we're, we are the church. Never forget that. Um, so a lot of times people use it as an excuse for bad feelings. I don't go to church because... Well, you have an attitude problem in most cases. I have yet to yet to meet a person who doesn't go to the building because they don't have an attitude problem. Yet to meet that person. Um, 
And so it's just a, it's just a, it just becomes an excuse for bad feelings. You are the church, and you meet together with the rest of the church to do these things and more. So I think that it's abundantly clear. Um, but anyways, um, next week we'll talk about confusing passages um, in the uh, books of the law, specifically Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, um, and talk about uh, ju just kind of what what they're talking about there. Um, a little bit less dialogue in that one. Um, but I think it'll still be good. So, any questions? Go ahead. Can, can, can I bring up the idol thing real quick? Yes, you can. Um, with, with your view on it, mm -hmm. um, Go ahead. if the um, um, original purpose of the object was for evil, then you, you don't believe it. Right. Right? But regardless of where, where it is now, right? Right. Okay. So, um... Here it comes you, the Paul and Barnabas. Here it comes. How, how, how do you separate like Christmas trees that were for sun god worship? Um, well, I don't have an answer. Um, well, I, I think that's in a matter of opinion. No, this was for him because yeah. his opinion, your opinion, oh, yeah. was different than his. Right. It doesn't matter. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, I don't really have an answer. Okay. So I was just wondering if, if and, you know, uh, separate from I, I don't. Okay. Um, there are some things that I just don't really push that far on, and Christmas trees is one of them. So you're a flip flopper. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> He's going to hell basically, it. basically, when you get married, you're Wait, saying you're my opinion doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> just Aww. kidding. I'm just kidding, crazy. Um, but yeah, there's, 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 there's some things, and also I've never researched it. Not excusing it. But, um, I mean, how do I know you're not just making something up? You, you actually brought it up for the Christmas. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Christmas. I'm kidding. Yeah. It's a joke. We're, we're joking, Ben. <laughs> He's not. He's in go mode. He is, buddy. Like, I, I can't even He's, joke about Paul. He's a pit bull. I can't even joke about Paul and Barnabas at this point. 